When you want gobs of horsepower and torque at the touch of the throttle, it's hard to beat cubic inches. And this engine has it in spades. Today, we're building a 665 cubic inch big block beast with our friends at Prestige Motorsports in Concord, North Carolina. We missed out on videoing the short block assembly of this engine, so I hope you'll excuse a few photos as we get started. We don't normally do this, but this engine is so unique, we thought it would still be worth it. The whole point of this engine is to create an astounding amount of power from a naturally aspirated pump gas engine, and Prestige decided to do it with tons of cubic inches. This specific build will be going into a high performance airboat, but the same recipe can make an unbelievable tire roaster in a car or a truck. It all starts with an aluminum block from Brodix. The Chevy style big blocks from Brodix has a lot of great features. Namely, it will take the four inch 600 thousandths bore we'll be using. It also has the cam tunnel raised 400 thousandths of an inch and a very tall 11.1 inch deck height to allow for a massive five inch stroke. To handle all the power we'll be producing, there are billet steel splayed bolt main caps and some seriously beefy webbing in the lifter valley. Plus, it's all aluminum, so even though the tall deck block means this engine will be both taller and wider than a standard big block, it will still be lighter than a smaller iron block. After machining and blueprinting the cast aluminum block, one of the first modifications Prestige made was to install piston oil squirters that pump pressurized oil to the underside of each piston. This helps keep them cool even during extended full throttle blasts. Of course, you can't make the most of nearly 700 cubic inches if you can't move enough air and fuel into the combustion chambers to keep all those cubic inches properly fed. That requires a pretty impressive set of cylinder heads. And for that task, Prestige chose Air Fuel Research's new 18 degree Magnum cylinder heads because they are about the only option that can keep up with the demands of this engine. AFR's Magnum straighten the valves up to an 18 degree angle versus a conventional 24, and they pair that with intake ports that have been raised a full half of an inch. Combine that with two inch 400 thousandths diameter intake valves, and you get ports that can flow almost 500 CFM. That makes this AFR's highest flowing big block cylinder head. The chambers and both intake and exhaust ports are CNC cut, and the combustion chambers are sized at 90 cc's. You will notice a spacer bolted to the intake side of the cylinder head in these photos, and we'll get more into that later. Prestige has had the intake and exhaust flanges CNC cut to accept O-rings to eliminate the need for gaskets. This isn't currently a standard option for the AFR heads, but it's something Prestige did themselves. Now let's get started on the build. The crankshaft is going to have to withstand bucket loads of torque applied through the combustion of lots of air and fuel. So a Cali's Magnum series crankshaft was chosen and clamped into place with the splayed bolt billet main caps. The rest of the rotating assembly is made up of a set of Oliver billet I-beam connecting rods and custom pistons from JE. The connecting rods are seven inches center to center and that's 865 thousandths longer than stock. The JE pistons are custom slugs with a significant dish to help keep the compression ratio down. But after running the numbers and realizing just how much air the AFR cylinder heads can flow, Prestige decided to go with an even more aggressive cam design from Comp Cams than they had originally spec'd out. To make it all work, they needed to hand cut the valve pockets just a little bit deeper. Here, if you look closely, you can see the larger valve pocket cut into the piston on the left hand side. And now that catches us up to where I actually got involved in the build. Here, lead engine assembler Larry Broker installs ARP head studs into the block. Head studs aren't as popular in street machines where it can make the cylinder heads difficult to remove with the engine still in the car, but that isn't an issue on a wide open airboat, and studs are better at maintaining good cylinder sealing without distorting the cylinder bores. And here's a better look at the pistons and the bores. The dish you see is 233 thousandths of an inch deep with a volume of 44 cc's. Along with the 90cc combustion chambers, that keeps the compression down to a pump gas friendly 10.4 to 1. The bigger valve reliefs that were cut in the top of the pistons are because of the very aggressive solid roller cam from Comp Cams. At 50 thousandths lift, this cam is ground with 274 degrees of duration for the intakes and 282 for the exhaust with 110 degrees of separation. Gross valve lift with 1.7 ratio rockers 
is 717 thousandths for the intakes and 715 for the exhausts. Up front, there is no conventional timing chain. Instead, Prestige is using a belt drive setup from Jessel. Belts do a better job of providing consistent valve timing and they're more resistant to stretch. In this shot, you can see the crank trigger installed and one of the magnets lined up with the trigger. Check out these custom made spacers at the front and rear of the block. These must be bolted in place before the heads and spacers can go on. Hang in there, you'll see exactly why in a minute. With ARP head studs in, Broker is ready to lower the AFR cylinder heads in place. Notice the intake spacers, which are approximately an inch thick, are already bolted tight to the intake side of the heads. The spacers are necessary because there is currently no cast intake manifold available for an 11.1 inch deck block. A fabricated intake would be an easier option, but it turns out in an airboat application, the vibrations over an extended amount of time can cause a sheet metal intake to crack. So Prestige had to figure out a way to make a cast intake for a 10.2 deck block work. The raised intake port makes for a practically straight shot to the top of the valve, even with the spacer in place. Broker torched down the heads to 70 pound-feet in three steps with ARP Ultra Torque Lube on the threads. And here's a better shot of the china wall spacers with the heads on. You can see how they are necessary to seal off the gap because the spacers create extra length on the intake side of the heads. The valve springs are a double nested setup from AFR held in place by titanium retainers. The springs are rated at 240 pounds per inch and at full lift that comes out to 650 pounds of pressure. Now we're ready to move on to the valve train. The Brodix block is designed to work with tie bar lifters and that's exactly what we're doing here with a set of these solid rollers from BAM. TND was sourced to provide the rocker arms. This is a shaft mount rocker system and Broker installs the rocker stands to the cylinder head. Each stand is secured to the cylinder head with 12 fasteners helping create a very stable valve train. The 7 16 inch bolts are torqued to 60 pounds each. The push rods are heavy duty units that shouldn't flex even with high spring pressures and extra length required from the tall deck height. These 7 16 inch diameter push rods are made by Manton with a 120 thousandths wall thickness. The intakes are 10 inches long while the exhausts are longer at 10 inches 700 thousandths. And with the push rods in place, the rocker arms can finally go on. Each rocker pivots on its own shaft with two fasteners securing it to the rocker stand. These are aluminum rockers from TND and the stock ratio of 1.7 to 1. Broker gives each a cold lash of four thousandths. With the aluminum block and cylinder heads, that should open up to a hot lash of 22 thousandths for the intakes and 24 for the exhaust. To help free up a little extra horsepower, Broker installs a belt-driven vacuum pump from Moroso. That's the puke tank and breather for it on the right. And here's a look at AFR's valve covers and single plane intake, both designed for these 18 degree heads. The Magnum intake fits the heads perfectly on a standard deck block, but it needed to be modified to work with this specific package. And you can see the changes we've made on the underside in this shot. The box in the front is an oil bifle that was going to be used for the vacuum pump, but it turned out that the pump pulled too much oil from this position, so the vacuum ports were moved to the valve covers. The big change is at the back. The customer wanted to run a distributor and not individual coil packs, so Prestige had to modify the distributor mounting boss because the intake is now sitting too high with the spacers. They did this by cutting out the distributor mounting boss from the deck of the intake, lowering it and then welding it back into position. Remember, this is a lot tougher than it looks because the distributor mounting boss location must not only be correct vertically, but also laterally as well as forward and aft 
in order to ensure correct gear alignment between the distributor gear and the camshaft. If it's not right, you're going to be tearing stuff up. Here's the final result. And although the process was quite time consuming, everything turned out great. And with that, we're finally able to get this 10.9 liter behemoth on the dyno. The carburetor is a Holley Gen 3 Ultra Dominator. This is a race specific carb with three circuits and it's rated at 1475 CFM. It takes a big carb to feed big cubic inches and that's exactly what we've got here. Plus, the Holley's sitting on top of a one inch four hole spacer. We started off using a set of Prestige's dyno headers to baseline the engine. These headers have a single two and a quarter inch pipe feeding a four into one merge collector. After break in and a little bit of tuning, our big inch bruiser did incredibly well, especially when it comes to producing ground pounding torque. Because this engine has an extremely long 5 inch stroke, Prestige didn't want to push the RPMs too high. As an airboat engine, the maximum RPM will be somewhere in the mid 5000 RPM range, but it will have to be able to run there for hours. We started off the pull at 3500 RPM and it was already making 730 pound feet of torque at that point, and it just rose from there. Peak torque was 910.7 at 5000 RPM. And by the time we pulled back on the handle at 6200 RPM, it was still making 834. Peak horsepower was 984.5 at 6200 RPM and still climbing. After that, we made a swap to a set of custom headers Prestige built especially for this engine. Besides having a shape more suited to airboats, these headers are a little larger with two and a quarter inch primaries and step ups to two and three eighths of an inch in the secondary tubes. Like the dyno headers, the pipes merge into four into one collectors. Turns out our 665 was able to make use of the larger headers. The custom headers made significantly more power all the way through the curve up until 5700 RPM. Peak torque jumped nearly 16 and a half to 927.1 and at 3500 RPM it was an incredible 50 pound feet better. Horsepower was also much improved all the way up in the range until the dyno headers finally caught up at 5700 RPM. Peak power for the new headers was down by a little over 22 to 961.6 at 6200. After that we made one final test. Prestige wanted to see if more header length would help power production, so 12 inch sections of pipe were added to just above the merge cover. time around weren't nearly as concrete. Throughout the curve, the torque and horsepower lines of the headers with the extensions nearly overlaid the curve of the original headers, but peak torque was still better with the original headers 927.1 to 921.6. So we're sticking with the headers without the extensions. Overall, this big inch big block is an absolute beast no matter if it's in a boat or a Chevelle. 
960 horsepower on pump gas is awesome enough, but when you can go from 3,500 RPM all the way to 6,200 and never drop below 780 pound-feet of torque, you are talking about an absolute monster that can turn tire rubber into the gray smoke of fun eight days a week. Hey, thanks for watching.